Welcome to UGC by Talks podcast. While we will be mainly focusing on user-generated content like ads and its creation, we will also tangle the topics such as user acquisition and everything that will help you to scale your mobile app or game. From expert insights and industry trends, this is your ultimate hub for the knowledge and inspiration. Subscribe, share, and like. One, two, three, and to the four. Is at your door. Listen carefully to get the melody. Everything you scale can grow with UGC. Everything you need to know to create this app. UGC can make it better. UGC makes sense. Refresh insights, you can check it out. UGC by Talk coming up tonight. Our first podcast guest, Rami Strovac, he's a head of user acquisition in the game biz consulting. He's ready to help you to scale your games through his innovative vision. He has been doing that for more than eight years. Let's hear him out. So let's hop on on the points. Can you please share some quick overview of the current user acquisition landscape in gaming? Yeah, sure. The biggest shift that happened in the last eight years is that there is no du duopoly anymore. So uh, back then, when I say duopoly, I mean on the Facebook and Google was kind of ruling the all competitive UR market. But then IDFA and scan happened. And nowadays, most of the publishers are kind of looking the what is the alternatives to make success with UA campaigns. So current stage is kind of different. Additional test alternative and additional networks to make success with the UA. So that's kind of it in overall. What are your alternatives then? Depends what, what are your goals. So uh, if you are looking to scale iOS, stick to the tr testing some networks like AppLovin, Bungle, maybe even DSPs like uh, Molecule and Liftoff, because they still kind of use uh, fingerprinting that, that, that will be gone. I think also soon I would revise my reporting and tracking the performance because it's now harder to, 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 to see with all attributed installs. You need to have really good scan scan set up in the singular or uh, app slider so that's that's how it should be approached today awesome sounds like a plan so tell us about <laughs> your uh, innovative user acquisition techniques today I'll talk a bit more about creative forms I think uh, for me that kind of innovative stuff and I think people are not utilizing them so much is the at uh, number one it's the playable ads and at number two it's the UGC videos so playable ads actually show the user the complete experience before the download in the game so it's a great way to showcase your game before even downloading it will eventually lead to the high uh, quality users and and the number two for me is the UGC videos because for me that's kind of 10 times better to tell the story than rather show the, the gameplay only. The gameplay work, works great for the kind of 80-90% of the publishers but sometimes when creative fatigue is happening you need to introduce something new and UGC is a great way to do it because you're, you're uh, kind of storytelling. Just look at the TikToks. They are kind of <laughs> most performing and most viral videos nowadays. And if you take a look at the most watched videos on TikTok, they are just not so kind of super fancy, super edited. They are just telling the context in an 80 way with the telephone recording himself and telling the story. What is the biggest challenge uh, you faced when implementing, for example, UGC like ads in the game campaigns? Uh, the biggest challenge is to set expectations because, and also to, to see on which, which networks that UGC will work good, you know, because you cannot put UGC and expect good engagement on some uh, networks that are showing ads on rewarded videos. But if you use UGC like on the, some networks like social media, Google, uh, like on YouTube, you make some landscape videos or on TikTok or you do the Snapchat or you do the Facebook for Reels, etc. You can see uh, some improvement in the terms of the brand awareness, engagement, and, and kind of that, those users. It's it's all about the challenges uh, to set clear goal and expectation, but I, uh, yeah, that's kind of the main thing for me. That's cool. Can you share some uh, like top tips for someone who is just starting out with GC like ads in the gaming world? 
try for, first of all define who is your persona who who are you talking with then you define who is the best a uh, person to 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 showcase your game to them and of course uh you will never get like one hit from first time so you need to test at least for me it you need to test 5 to 15 creators to find one to two that will be appealing to your game i had experience for example in my previous company that we was testing like more than 300 creatives in a year uh and it's just you need it's it just number game so 90 I think 90 to 95% of the tested creatives uh wasn't uh winners. So in order to find who, what is working you need to, uh, you you really need to test a lot. So it same goes with the UGC. You 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 cannot go with like one two creators and say okay this is not working. You just need of course first as I said to set the expectation, set the goal, investigate okay who will be the right person, right market and everything and then do the multiple iterations and test. How about the common mistakes besides for example testing not that much of creators, creatives and etc. What will be the common mistakes that you usually and often see in the industry and how to avoid them? So first of all when that I was also mentioning before it's kind of not defining the clear goals so in order to have that you, you need first of all what is kind of goal for the ua and second or maybe that this should be the first one uh but that comes to the maybe some small to mid-sized studios is most of them that they are kind of relying on only one uh single channel which is not the best scenario with my experience that i had like with, with facebook and id idfa changes and everything you at least need to have all the time two to three user acquisition channels that are kind of giving you results and also it's important to know that every channel is different every channel will bring different ltv of the users different attention of the users so you need to treat them separately so yeah that's kind of two stuff that i i wanted to mention but it it's there is plenty of stuff that 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 are kind of common mistakes or i don't know is is it's not kind of mistake it's 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 kind of maybe more people are not aware of that you know so yeah that's it okay going to the future of user acquisition and gaming what will be your predictions uh i think it's challenging more than ever uh and number one challenge is uh, adapting to those new privacy norms how to track it properly and monitor and give uh, some real reports that show what happens so that's for me number one challenge uh and second i think the user acquisition cost is rising as the time goes the products uh the, the more products are on the market the bigger competition is and within all that you have like the uh price uh right rising of prices for the cpis and everything and for me i think that uh key step to to stay alive and competitive is to uh work closely with the product teams and when you work close with the product teams you you, you need to work on the metrics like retention session length uh long uh, long term ltv and everything in order to say to to stay competitive for, uh on the market and uh for to to enable you to scale at the highest uh level thank you very much amis for joining us today thank you for sharing useful tips and tricks for the user acquisition in the gaming industry so happy to host you and see you soon Bye. Well, that was it for today. Thank you for watching till the end. Please comment, share, like. It will be much appreciated.